Hey, what's up guys, Rick Cordero, Run Playback. I hope you're having a great day despite all the circumstances. So I'm gonna show you my second Adobe Character Animator music video that I created with my friend and amazingly talented musician, Beth Sorrentino. So fake it, I'll be your stumbling. I'll be your super queen and make you. Fast forward a few weeks later, uh, everyone's working from home, everyone's quarantined, and I thought, why not turn this song into an animation? So here's how I did it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I created this animation. It's pretty simple, nothing super complicated, but I'll walk you through my process. So first things first is the audio. And so Beth sent me an M4A file, which she recorded, I believe on her iPhone through GarageBand. And I took that audio and then I put it into Adobe Premiere. And the thing was that because she recorded the audio um, like in one, one take, there wasn't a vocal track that was separated. So what I did was in this second layer over here was record my own audio underneath her lyrics so that I could isolate the actual um, vocals only without the instrumental behind it. But you'll see why I did that because it's basically just to create the, um, the animated mouth movements. Okay, so let's go into Adobe Character Animator. So this is the puppet that I use. The puppet is called Maddie. You could actually find this puppet within uh, Adobe Character Animator in the stock puppets. I did some really, really basic uh, customization to it. I just sort of changed the fabric and the texture of the skirt and removed the necklace. That's about it. The first thing I did was import the, um, the audio. And so I have my take here, and then this is Beth's fi uh, fully mixed take of the audio. This is my audio. And it's really simple to uh, actually sync up to the puppet. And so all you have to do is select your puppet and then you select the audio and you go over here and you do a, a compute take from scene audio. So you can see it's kind of like resembling uh, most of the words and the, uh, you know, the syllables and stuff like that. So, you know, that came out pretty good. There's probably like small parts in there which um, could be a little bit better and you could actually tweak it if you zoom in here. You could see like on the bottom here, um, the different syllables and the different uh, mouth movements that the puppet creates. And so, yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool option if you wanna like extend a um, letter or a sound, you could do it through here. This is the next thing that I like to do, which is animate the face. And uh, so I use the camera to do that. I'm sort of moving right to the, to the music um, and to the lyrics as well. And so you could see sort of that swaying and like that kind of thing. Just trying to get into the rhythm of the song. It's like puppetry, right? You really wanna like become the puppet. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is the triggers. So the triggers are the, you know, the arm movements and anything that's draggable on the puppet. So you could see here that the puppet is rigged to move its arms. And so um, what I did was sort of, uh, you know, place the arms where I want them and then record them using um, record two frame take. And you could see here, that's what I did. As you create them and then add your different custom uh, key for it, you can then trigger it within the animation. So here I have Q is neutral, W is behind the back, and E I called neutral too. So you can see here as I like move across the triggers, um, I'm able to sort of make the hands just like move back and forth depending on what the puppet is doing and what the song is, you know, how the lyrics are going. I didn't really have anything super extreme to do with the hands here because it's it's such a mellow song you know there's no reason for the puppet's arms to go like anything do anything crazy <laughs> so it's really just sort of like these three moves over here once you record them and trigger them uh 
you can see here, you can mess with the, I guess, the, the ease of it. So you can see how you could control the different ease and things like that. You could make the, you know, the other arm, uh, instead of having it be like really in sync with each other, you could sort of offset it to create a more natural um, movement. And I like that it's actually um, moving in, in sort of like a lower frame rate. And I think that that lowered frame rate, it gives it that sort of Kubo effect, gives it that 2D animation mixed with 3D animation feel to it. So the first export is this wide angle. And so I leave it pretty much at this size. So remember that everything that you see in the white is gonna be alpha channel. But um, this will be my kind of medium, medium shot here. And then the final export would obviously be like uh, close up, kind of like that. Um, and so this is the extreme close up. You can see that it is pixelating a little bit because it is a Photoshop file. But uh, I know that I'm gonna put some different effects on it, so it won't be too obvious. Okay, so next we'll go into After Effects. And what I did was bring the different characters into um, just a blank composition and put these uh, sort of an infinite loop uh, tunnel background behind it. Uh, I wanted to create this illusion of sort of moving through space. So I chose this kind of futuristic looking background over here. I added a uh, Red Giant Tunit Studio filter to it. So I wanted to create sort of a cartoon um, look to it. So it creates these like dark edges and outlines. And I thought it was a really cool look and juxtaposed really nice with the character. And so I did this three times. So this is the wide, you know, from the export that we did. And then obviously medium. And you can see with the medium that I added a little bit of uh, a camera blur to the background. And the camera blur was simply a um, Gaussian blur. So I don't really use the, the, I find this to be the fastest blur. You, you get a better effect, I think, with um, the camera lens blur, but it just takes really long to render, so I don't like to use it a lot. And then um, I did that with the close-up as well. So three comps, and uh, these were my three camera angles that I want to incorporate in the final music video. You can also see that I added some uh, some of this falling ash over here. So I have like, you know, some elements of like um, foreground elements that are happening. So I have like this like really subtle falling ash. Oh, another cool thing that I did for the character uh, is obviously did some color correcting with Lumetri. And then uh, something called uh, I believe it's real, uh, real smart. I think it's real smart. RSMB real smart motion blur. And what this does is it creates um, some motion blur to the characters, and uh, you know that you won't necessarily get from within Adobe Character Animator or from you know After Effects motion blur. So when you apply it, it adds that, like you can see, this really subtle motion blur to the character. So whenever she moves, when the hair moves, uh, or the eyes move, it adds another uh, layer or another like uh, illusion of like camera movement. So that's something I like to add. It's very subtle, but I like it and it doesn't take up too much rendering time. So this is my comp for After Effects. It's not, uh, super organized, so please don't judge me. <laughs> um, but uh, it makes it makes sense, so to me at least. Um, so you could see, so the concept that I wanted to do was um, sort of like these vintage uh, TV sets, right? And I wanted to put the puppet inside of these TV sets. And the lyrics are really kind of like um, about different characters and different situations that they're going through. So I kind of imagine that each of these backgrounds tells a story about 
the character, right? Not the character of the, you know, of our actual animated character, but the animated character and Beth, you know, which is the avatar for Beth, Beth's lyrics, um, actually Billy Corgan's lyrics, but Beth, you know, performing the lyrics is sort of the unseen narrator in this story, right? So the backgrounds are, are also a character and they really tell the story of the song. And so, you know, I imagined that would, wouldn't it be cool to put the character in these different um, in these different scenarios? Now the thing was, you know, obviously the character wasn't doing anything super complex in terms of animation. It's just sort of like standing and performing. So I wanted to have a way to keep the video moving and continuous without any really complex animations. Um, but yet still told a story and wasn't just like, you know, let's do it for the sake of it, right? Um, so yeah, so these are all the individual comps, which are just kind of like different uh, different kinds of wallpaper that I found for like vintage television sets. And you can see that it has kind of like a, um, kind of like a look to it, right? It has like these uh, like ink lines to it or outlines. And so I actually achieved that through a plugin, um, which is Red Giant's uh, Universal Tunit Studio. So this actually, this is the actual photo, right? And then with Tunit Studio, it turns it into kind of like a graphic novel. And that was like a really cool look that I wanted for this video, since we have an animation which is not really clearly a 2D animation. It kind of it kind of straddles between both worlds, but um, I thought it'd be cool to have like more of a comic book feel background. So I did that. I applied that plugin to pretty much every background, and it really gives it these hard lines that I don't know that it really uh, contrasts in an interesting way with the animation. So I thought that was pretty cool. You know, it still looks like a photo, but it kind of kind of doesn't. Like it's kind of like a little bit between both worlds, like I said. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to do was create another texture or create another layer, some sort of other element that was happening. So I added these dust elements and uh, see if it plays a little bit. But you can see these dust elements moving very subtle in the back, or sorry, in the foreground. And I used uh, different kinds of dust particles. This one had some like pink in it. You can see it. it's really, really subtle. This one has like these bigger particles happening. So just, you know, nothing crazy, just uh, something just to add a little bit more depth. It's kind of easy to kind of go nuts and like bring a whole bunch of layers and effects to something like this because you're like, well, it looks so static, it looks so boring, but there's something about the simplicity of, you know, of the frame and what what you're trying to tell and really like the music is so is so good it's so it's so intimate and so personal that you want to really not distract from that you know so um i'm employing all of my music video directing <laughs> uh tricks into animation which is a whole lot of fun and so once i have like kind of the cut assembled um I, yeah, I pretty much just kind of do, do uh, you know, how I would cut a video. I just kind of cut it in After Effects, which is, you know, not always the best thing. But when you're dealing with, like, graphical elements, it makes sense to kind of cut it in an After Effects and then bring it into Premiere, which I'll show you, you know, for, like, the final touches. So, yeah, so this is pretty much the basis of it. And then um, for the camera moves, I created a 3D camera over here. 
and created a null layer. And within that, I basically um, created a wiggle expression to have a handheld look. And so having this like handheld look was was important to me because I wanted it to to move around, right? To have a little bit more um, of unpredictability to it. For some of these moves with the comps, I just do like different tracks, like uh, different zoom ins and things like that. So that was just basic like scale in and out and things like that. Depending on what I want to draw the viewer to in within the frame. Okay, so we are back in Adobe Premiere, and as you can see, it's very like uh, very simple, um, like final touches to the uh, to the actual video. And so what I added here was um, Red Giants Mojo. So this is a color correction plugin, and it just gives it a little bit of a you know sort of a cinematic color to it. There's some vignetting happening, you know, some uh, interesting contrast stuff, uh, tint and punch, a little bit of a bleaching, a little bit of a fading to it. Um, so I like that. I, I really like that look. It just makes it feel, I don't know, gives it gives it something a little bit extra to it that I like. It's not a look that everyone, you know, may be into, but I think it was really appropriate, especially since all these different backgrounds had different, obviously different color, um, color corrections applied to it. So this was a way to neutralize everything and make everything look a little bit more uniform. And then you can see here, I just kind of went in and, and changed a little bit. Uh, some like additions to my original comp. So instead of comping the whole thing all over again, I just picked the parts that I wanted and then just reinserted them here. So that's like something where I wanted the three different angles to play in all three different TVs. And then the ending here, I wanted the final shot to be the actual character within the scene. Um, I thought it was a nice way to bring everything back and actually bring the character within the space. And I also thought it would be interesting for it to come back in this black and white background. So um, did my best to color correct it and make the character and light it so that the character looks like they're really within this space. Like, um, so a lot of like playing with the color correction. And then I just added some credits at the end. And that's pretty much how I put this video together. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you found this video helpful. I will include a link to the full video once uh, the second part launches so you can watch the whole thing. As always, if you want more of this weird, diverse content that I put out, uh, hit me on the blog at runplayback.com. Peace.